uh, what do you see to the class? And they say, well, it looks like there's a bunch of people. How many people? Well, if you count them, there's 20. What else do you see? You notice some of them look like they smoke, and some mm -hmm. of them look like they got something like that. Mm -hmm. How many smoke? Well, you can see the nine smoke, and the five, right. and five have whatever that is, mm -hmm. lung cancer, mm -hmm. whatever it mm -hmm. is. Okay, well, then I open up this thing and say, well, what proportion smoke? Uh, mm -hmm. you know, what proportion? And what proportion have both? Mm -hmm. Well, you're talking about an estimated, you're talking about a probability. You're estimating a probability from a sample. Right. No. So I'm introducing probability through this example, through real numbers. Mm -hmm. And then I say, well, actually, when you consider all this stuff, you can actually put all these numbers in a two-by-two two table. Mm -hmm. Consider all these things. Mm -hmm. And then you can start talking about, okay, what does the two-by-two two table mean, and what are the rules of probability for two-by-two two tables? Mm -hmm. And so I started about rules of probability. Mm -hmm. I went through all these different rules of uh, you know, what do you mean by uh, joint probability? Okay, uh, okay. Or, uh, You're going to hold them up so that I can get them on the camera a little bit? Well, yeah. I'll hold that one up. Okay. Uh, now, the thing is, the way this thing worked was, this was, you know, I had these, that, when you went from, I had directions. And then I would read this, and then I'd go there. Yeah. And then the direction would say, then open that phone. Yeah. Okay. And, and these were on overhead transparency projectors, right? This was, you'd put these on the overhead transparency uh, yeah, projectors? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. This is where... Overhead transparencies were around. I mean, uh, you know, but people weren't using it that way. They what they were doing? They just bring their transparency in with nothing on it. Then they write on it, and it's not that much difference from chalk and blackboard, except maybe their handwriting was neater. Maybe you know, mm. but they usually didn't do it in advance. Mm -hmm. mm. So I did all this many weeks in advance to make mm -hmm. this thing, and then I taught this whole thing. Mm -hmm. And the, I mean, the last part of it. I mean, I'm I'm talking about. Uh, well, I mean, eventually I have. I mean, I, I don't know where, where I'm going with all this thing, but eventually... I'm I mean, I remember seeing your lectures where you would flip up the slide and <laughs> uncover things. And I have, like, observed and expected probabilities. I have to mm -hmm. define what that means. And mm -hmm. then I have to fill in the tables. What are the observed and the expected probabilities in here? And I have to t tell about what they are. Mm -hmm. And then I said, well, then, when you got these things, how do you put them together to get some summary score of whether, in some overall sense, the observed and the expected are close to one another, and that's the chi-square mm -hmm, Exactly. And I, and I described what the right. formula was. Exactly. You know, so the computer will do that for you. Yeah. So they learn, you know, from the basics of what prob a probability was, but they even learn something about what people do in real life in terms of a real thing. And they learned it at the beginning of the course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was really proud of that, you know. Now, what I've done with this now is I've translated this, I've made this into a PowerPoint presentation. Mm -hmm. In fact, I have two versions of it. I have a, a, a version which has got a, uh, a, a, um, uh, a narrated version. Well, I'm the narr narrator, and I also have an unnarrated version because if somebody wants to use the unnarrated and just let lecture themselves, they can mm -hmm. do it. Okay. But I also did, I also said, okay, that's one part of the course. What other parts of the course? And so the next thing I did was, and that related to, uh, next thing, the next part of the course we're getting into is statistical inference. We're learning about, well, what's a test of hypothesis? What's a confidence interval? How do you do, uh, uh, or, or what's, or even before that, what's the binomial distribution? What's the normal distribution? So I developed a bunch of slide tape presentations to teach those things that were, they, they look like, they look like this. Like this is one of them. This is one mm -hmm. about, um, mm -hmm. this is one about uh, confidence intervals for the mean when the variance is unknown. Mm -hmm. And it's got an order. Slide that tape. around so we can see the cover. That, that cover in there. Uh, uh, just just rotate it a little bit because it's at a different angle. This is, this is called a viewing study guide. Mm -hmm. okay. I did seven of these. Okay. The first three were on distributions. You want to put one binomial, one to binomial, the, mm -hmm. uh, the normal, and the. Um, and two issues about the normal. One is how to, what the normal distribution was, and the second one is how to get percentiles. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was a confusing. I, I didn't do ever do one on Poisson because I never got to it. Mm. That would have been number two. Mm -hmm. And then I started doing things on uh, on um, inference. And the first one was, what do you mean by inference? Yeah. What's a high test of hypothesis? Right. Was it? So I had a whole thing like this on there. Yeah. Right. And I had an audio tape, and I had a viewing study guide. Now the viewing study guide has in it, it has in it a summary of what's in the, on, on the audio tape. It has a practice example that was worked through on the tape. And then it has a extra question. 
with the answers at the back mm -hmm. so that they can work on it. And what I did with this, I had seven slide tape presentations. And the way I used it was different than other people. This is, again, active teaching. What I did was I made ten copies of these seven slide tape presentations. I brought them over to the Health Sciences Library, put them on closed reserve, and I told the class that during this next two-week period when we're covering these topics, what I want you to do is to go through all these seven things on your own and learn these topics. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm going to talk about them a little bit in class, but these are more, get into things a little bit more deeply. So mm -hmm. if you have trouble learning about what a percentile is, you can do that one. If you don't, just don't even look at it. Mm -hmm. you know? But that was the assignment. So I, I, that was another contribution. Was this is at UNC. This is at UNC. Now, all these seven things are now on a PowerPoint thing. I've now got a PowerPoint thing, mm -hmm. and they're all narrated. So are they online? I, are they online? Are they in Active Epi? They're not in Active Epi, but I have them. I can send them. Whatever it is, they're, it, it, historically, they're you know. So I have the, the original thing, mm -hmm. you know, and then I have the latest thing, the latest version of this thing. And this is not in Active Epi because it's on basic statistics. Active mm -hmm. Epi was about, about Epi, right? You know. So, um, uh, what do I now? One of my issues is what do I do with these boxes? Do I need them? Do I save them? Do I throw them out? Who needs them? I have the PowerPoint thing. They're the best. They're better than this. But historically, yeah. there's something about this that I don't want to throw out. But right. who's going to want to use this if I have yeah. the other one? Yeah. So, well, not use them, but that's I That's why I'm talking <coughs> about that. Yeah, All well, right. since those were done at UNC. Yeah. Uh, I can certainly ask folks at UNC in the library or the, uh, the I mean, the archives. Yeah. Who would want, you know, if anybody would want them. Um, but but the thing is, you see, it won't necessarily um, do the job that the PowerPoint does. The PowerPoint does it better. Mm-hmm. You know? yeah. Well, there are a lot of it's things in museums historic. that yeah. you want to know about how they were, th how they were then, even though you don't right. use them now. Right, in fact, I mean, like, you have old cars in museums, you don't drive them now. And the way these were done was, I had to, you couldn't just um, do this audio thing, you had to write a script. Yeah. You had to have slides. Yeah. You had to decide, so what, the way we did it was we had index cards, and we wrote the script and a draft of what was going on the slide on right. index cards. Yeah. And then we had to, you know, fine tune them. Mm -hmm. So that the script was better, and what eventually it went on the final index card was what what you want the slide to look like, and that took some time to do yeah. seven of those. Right. But I never did anymore, you know. Uh, so I, I do still have copies of the um, of some of those index cards mm -hmm. that, were, that were used. I don't want to throw them out because mm -hmm. that has to do with the history of the of the thing, you know. So in any case. The I'll try to summarize it. What what I've done over the years is there's a history of how I went from one thing to another. I mean, I eventually went to to uh, Active Epi CD ROM because I wanted to do something that was better than just PowerPoint that that was able to be multimedia that would allow people to get into something, not have lo a long chapter to, to read, but short shorter things. And so I wanted to do something that was simpler, more interesting, more fun, and stuff like that. So that's why I did the Active Epi CD-ROM. But then I also had to do an Active Epi companion text mm -hmm. because if you were looking at the CD-ROM and you're seeing things that are going on the screen, which you're, you're having fun looking at, you might say to yourself, well, I'd like to see the text of this. Mm -hmm. So the CD, the companion text has the text of this, even though on the CD-ROM you can click something and it'll give you the text, but you, then you have to print it out or something like that. So the, uh, so the companion text and the CD-ROM were sold by Springer uh, for 45 bucks or something like that, which is pretty cheap, you know. Uh, you know, but then eventually what happened was the um, the operating systems for the, the, the CD-ROM uh, was for the Mac and the PC. Well, the operating systems, you know, changed. Yeah. And eventually the CD-ROM wouldn't work on a Mac. Yeah. And it wouldn't work on even some of the newer, maybe the latest Windows. Right. So I said, well, you know, this is going to be obsolete in about a year. Yeah. So that's why I changed it to Active Web. Yeah. And I said, okay, in order to do that, what am I doing all this for? And what am I, you know, this is, I've been teaching for 50 some odd years or 48 years. Do I want to make money out of this or what do I want to do? So what I said is, I'm going to do this, finish this, give it out for free. Mm. 
you know, and that's why it's my yeah, gift. right. You know, so if somebody wants to use it, somebody might say it's free, it couldn't be any good. Yeah. You know, or they might say it's free, but it's from me, and I'm well-known teacher, you know. 